It's 4 p.m. in New York City and it's impossible to get a cab. Can we use data to fix this? I'm Felipe Hoffa, a developer advocate for Google. I am here to attend a hackathon hosted by NYU, the Rudin Center for Transportation, and the TLC, Taxi and Limousine Commission of New York, where top data scientists and researchers will use data to solve this problem. How? Well, we got data, we got all the taxi trips. Chris Wong, how did you manage to get this data? The Taxi and Limousine Commission has an internal data analysis team and they released a tweet with a, a visual of available taxis by time of day. Um, and my response as an open data advocate was, is the raw data available so that everyone can do this kind of analysis? And the response on Twitter was, it's not available for download, but it is available from a freedom of information law request. I sent in the form and within a couple hours I got a response. So a couple days later I had 175 million taxi trips in CSV format on a hard drive. 175 million taxi trips and then you managed to share this data with the world. People started coming to me to, to, to meetups that I went to to actually get the data and there were so many people messaging me that finally I was like okay it's time to put this online and within 24 hours it was all over uh, Google BigQuery, there was a really awesome Reddit thread of people doing you know, simple analyses from BigQuery and just kind of slicing it up and, and figuring out what's in the data. So all the New York City taxi trips for 2013 are now shared on BigQuery and anyone can instantly analyze them. So stay with me to see what happens tomorrow, what solutions we find, and remember, at the end of the day, someone will be fired. Long show, sorry. Taxi! We're here at NYU Rudin Center for Transportation, and today is a historical date. It's the first time the TLC Taxi and Limousine Commission for New York City is meeting and working with citizens to take a look at the data that the TLC is sharing with us today. Uh, we'll try to come up with solutions, answers, discoveries, and I can't wait to see what happens today. Today we shared all of, of 2014's uh, trip data with the additional information added. And the way that we did it is we, we loaded it onto Google Cloud Storage and, and loaded it into BigQuery, which is how all the participants uh, access the information today. Hello, I'm here with Ben Wallington, a visiting professor at Pratt, and also the data scientist behind iQuant New York. So Ben Wellington, you were looking at the fight and the... It's a parking ticket data set, and I wanted to find out how much uh, revenue in parking tickets every fire hydrant in New York City was making. So first I mapped out the top 250 grossing fire hydrants in New York City in terms of uh, ticket revenue. And these were the two, by the way, top grossing hydrants in the entire city. And if you look at the amount of revenue they were generating, um, they were generating over $55,000 a year. Uh, among the two hydrants in parking ticket revenue for the last at least five years. It turns out that it looked like a bike lane between the hydrant and the parking spot. And so the car would pull in and say to themselves, well, I'm not next to the hydrant. There's a bike lane between me and the hydrant. A month later, they actually repainted the parking spots um, by adding these uh, stripes here. So they uh, prevent future people from making this mistake. So this is, a ch this is a time when open data has changed the infrastructure of New York City in a small way. But imagine this happening locally in everyone's neighborhood. Uh, if every person sort of got together and found some of the issues in their own neighborhoods, put their minds together, we can all start to make changes very locally. I think that collaboration with citizens is really important because again, we kind of come from the policy from what we know, working with a lot of industry stakeholders that are very, very vocal. So it's really great when we finally get citizen voices in here. These are things that actually matter to me and that are important to me and can help us understand better what their problems are and just be a part of that dialogue. I am excited to be here today to help the TLC better understand exactly what uh, is happening for taxis between 4 and 6 p.m. Ultimately, what we're going to do is take the data from BigQuery, put it into Redash, download it, bring it into CardoDB, and make a map of where people get uh, picked up, see where the cabs are spending the most time, and look at them specifically between 4 and 6 p.m. because between 4 and 6 p.m. cabs shift over from one driver to another and if a driver doesn't have to do that shift it can take advantage of the extra amount of people that need service during rush hour. Data that is open means that it's accessible by anyone and having it be open means that people can look at it, they can come up with their own ideas, they can start making decisions that make cities a better place to live and having open data 
be open and free and available it makes that all happen a lot faster. I think the best part of today was that we've been focusing so much on the data leading up to this event. We've been looking at the data nonstop, and today we had five taxi drivers here talking about the issues that they deal with every day. You can look at data all day long, but you may not be able to see it from the other side. It wasn't just numbers, it wasn't just mathematics and, you know, and ones and zeros. Um, there was very much a human factor present here. And the fact that we were sort of taking that approach to data um, you know, adding the human factor in with the data and putting it all in a bowl, and it's, it, it, it was better than the sum of its parts. Right now, the agency is really taking a hard look at our rules and, you know, figuring out what makes sense today and what doesn't with all this emerging technology. And this is one piece in the puzzle. This is another part of that feedback loop to take this information and create uh, progressive policy, and so I think this will definitely be a part of that process. Our, our agencies do great work, but they have limited resources. So when they embrace the open data movement, uh, it allows citizens, you know, to give back and find some of the maybe issues or problems and give suggestions on how we can run our cities better. With hackathons next year, I hope that we'll see these kind of micro improvements using civic hacking to resolve issues. We have a lot of smart New Yorkers, a lot of people who can look at data, look at numbers, and understand and what, where the issues are, and suggest policy changes that we might not have seen otherwise. We had access to more than 160 million taxi trips taken during 2014, and a glimpse into the for hire vehicles data, like Uber and Lyft, confirming that there are 20% less taxi drivers on the road. When we most need them, we spend the day going deeper into the data. Noel Hidalgo and David Marulli looked for patterns that may reveal the best shift change locations. Arlene Ducao and Chris Willard explored the potential of having three shifts instead of the traditional two. Jeff Fersoko, Ben Wellington and Carlson King took Uber's data to compare their driver's behavior with traditional taxis. And Damon Vistic went deeper into why we have the current shifts and also surfaced interesting behaviors about tipping. Why would people tip more after a New York Knicks loss? There's a lot more to discover, and it's your turn to dig in. Thank you for joining us. This was an amazing day to see how citizens, taxi drivers, academia, government can come up together and look for solutions using data, using open data, and great tools to do it. Uh, th that's it for today. Make sure to follow us for the next Big Data Story. I'm Felipe Hoffa. Goodbye.